What does it mean to think in narrative and how is this useful? Wow. Well, I think it's important to, to take a step back on that because you know a lot of people talk about storytelling these days, mm -hmm. right? And it's a really big buzzword. And it's really exciting to see how storytelling as a concept is finding its way into the, the business conversation, into the entrepreneurial conversation, into the creative conversation. I think it's important for us to, to remember that we are literally hardwired for narrative. It's how the human brain works. And actually just recently in the last few years, scientists have identified the specific gene in the brain that allows us to tell stories. That no other species that we know of on this planet tell stories. There are plenty of other species that have language and communicate, but our ability to tell stories, our ability to, to basically dream and project right, an image, an idea into the future and to be able to transmit that information so that it, 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 it gets communicated from one person to the next, from one generation to another and beyond, right? That's, that's the, that this natural capacity as human beings that's allowed us to evolve and develop as we have and to organize into civilization. And if you look at all the things that we've done, whether it's you know the, the rise of business, the rise of commerce, the rise of the arts, uh, education, all of these things, they all fundamentally come back to storytelling. Um, and actually there's a, anthropologists say that 70% of what we learn is through stories, right? If you wanna co connect with somebody else, right? Tell them a story. It's like we immediately, the, the moment you start telling a story, uh, you go from like the dry facts and sort of boring data and information, and people suddenly perk up. They suddenly like lean forward. People wanna know where things are gonna go. Like, there's a reason why we love watching television or going to the movies or reading books, right? Those are the classic story forms. And of course now, that's being transformed through the internet um, and social media and how we tell stories. Basically, the boundaries of narrative are, are evolving. So, all of that is set up to the question, okay, what does it mean to think in narrative? Well. If storytelling is what we're naturally hardwired for, if that's how we make sense and meaning of the world around us, imagine how your life might be different if you understood that basic vocabulary. Like, because th this is how we, we go, like every experience you have, you can actually analyze it, you can actually reflect on it through the lens of narrative. There are these narrative themes that are playing out, right? We're all characters. There's usually these you know, struggles or conflicts, challenges we're trying to overcome. Um, and, and so if, if you can start to see those patterns, right, it completely transforms the process of entrepreneurship, of innovation, of branding, of leadership, of teaching, all of those things. Um, you become also far, far more em empathetic because the, the second you start thinking in narrative, you also have to start thinking about your audience. Mm -hmm. Right? And as a storyteller, you're at the mercy of your audience. It's about telling a story that's in service to who you're talking to. Right? It's not just about saying, oh, I'm so special and great. Let me tell you stories that let you know how special and great I am. Right? You want to you find and share stories that are going to serve as a bridge. Right? They're going to create a connection between people. And, and that, to me, is the holy grail of not only thinking a narrative, but ultimately communicating through storytelling. And it comes down to this, Eric. If you can tell the story that people can identify with as their own, if people see themselves in the story, right? If, 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 if my story is your story, well, guess what? Then the need to persuade, to convince, or sell you on anything disappears. And so, right, I mean, think about the world we're living in right now where we're more interconnected than we've ever been before, and we're also more suspicious and distrustful than we've ever been. It's like we have all, all this forced intimacy. Really, do I, wanna, do I really wanna know what 1,500 Facebook friends had for breakfast this morning, mm -hmm. right? Like there's, there's this, there's this push-pull we're all facing right now. So much that's coming at us, mm. right? So we're trying to figure out, okay, well, geez, who do I really connect with? Who do I really share something in common with? Right? And, and we feel like people are bombarding us trying to, people are sharing their stories through social media, but a lot of it is, um, it feels sometimes coercive or manipulative. We're always wondering in the back of our mind, like, are you trying to sell me something? Really, what do you, what, what's the agenda you're pushing? 
So that's why this, the, it comes back to that, that larger axiom of tell the story in service to your audience, mm -hmm. right? And, if, and if, if my story is your story, dude, I don't have to sell you anything. I don't need to convince you of anything, yeah, yeah. right? And th think of how that might influence and change the way we interact each, with each other in a whole variety of different contexts, whether that's in the boardroom, whether that's in the classroom, uh -huh. right? Whether that's, you know, sitting together at a table, talking, yeah. all those different situations. No. Yeah.